now in November. <clears throat> I said on my previous hike that it might be snow. And we did have snow. But it turned out to be rain. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I guess this is a rainy hike. Hope you will join me anyways. Come on. As I was driving up here, I drove past a couple of rivers, or it's basically the same river, and a couple of lakes. It was so insanely much water. And you can hear the water here. This is not supposed to be there. <laughs> At least not that much. And you can see there is water everywhere. You can hear it's water everywhere. It has been raining so much for um, almost a week, if you count in the, the snow as well. Uh, and it has its toll on everything, as you can see here. There is. Almost a river in there. Then you have the streams going down here. You can actually see some of the snow that's left here. Um, this is a stream further down. Look at this. It's not supposed to be like that. I've come to the realization that I might not be able to complete this hike because of all the water. <clears throat> I will be hiking past uh, a lake at some point, but if it's too over flooded, I don't think I will be able to, to walk around it. We'll see though, we'll see. Look at this, you can see how the water have washed this, this road away. So much larger stones are now visible here. And it usually ain't like this. There is much more gravel here. Water has some extreme power to it. is on because if I get my hair wet my head wet I will start to freeze quite quite quickly so and a beanie would just be soaked previously I've had this thing that I I didn't go on hikes if it was heavy snow or, or heavy rain or 
rain at all actually um, but that's mostly because I do not like to get wet <laughs> and uh, heavy snowfall makes everything difficult at least more difficult um, but as the saying goes there ain't no bad weather only bad clothes so why not get dressed and get out into the woods and go for a short hike this is a shorter hike and this ain't a, a long one it's also um, a round trip so yeah I think it would be would be great it's about four degrees four degrees centigrade and that's what they say is the limit for when snow can can fall so I guess it's warmer up in the air <laughs> that uh, the water haven't formed crystals yet but if it gets colder we will have snow and if all this rain had come as snow I wouldn't have been here <laughs> I would definitely not have been here I would probably have been um, blowing snow blowing snow at home I'd rather be here though <laughs> this is my current path it's quite hard to see don't you think <laughs> I, I think so but it is here I can see I can see it <laughs> look at this oh this is my trail soaked so I better find ways around it I guess that will happen many times from now on that I have to find ways around the trail to not be soaked up to my knees it's a bit windy too great someone lost the, their cup from the thermos maybe they will find it Or maybe they don't want. This is cozy, ain't it? It's uh, it's foggy. It's raining. It's the Norwegian forest in the first weekend of November. What more can you ask for? This is what you get in the Norwegian autumn anyways rain and I guess that's I don't know about others but I when I think of autumn I think of the changing of colors and at least the changing of temperatures and uh, rain a whole lot of rain not so much about snow because that's that belongs to the winter the fog is the lake that I'm walking around 
and um, oh my god the fog it's laying really heavy around here now it was not like that just a moment ago it's because of the changing of temperatures and um, of course the rain Yeah, I most definitely need to make at least this, these trousers more waterproof because I think I'm getting wet on my feet because it's all dripping down into my shoes from, from the trousers or the hiking pants or whatever you want to call them. Ah, at least I'm on the right path. We have the famous blue markings that's great at least not negative what is this someone has put up some pipes and i think they're working actually It's probably to stop the water going down this this path here. Would rather have it going all the way down to the lake over there. Which is great. People are amazing at making routes like this accessible and not getting destroyed and yeah. Maintaining them. But still having that free nature feeling without too much handiwork being done. And that lake you see is called Ramnåskjern. And that would be translated to Raven Hill Pond. Raven Hill Pond. Kjern is another name of a body of water in Norway. Same as lake and, and all those others. I think I've mentioned many of them before. This is Raven Hill Pond, anyways. I can hear some water streaming down, probably in the middle of the road. Or underneath it, maybe. In the middle. It's all in the middle. But it's coming from deep within the mountains. When you look at this, it looks rather man-made, doesn't it? with the, the boulders laying almost like a fence and you have the same thing going on over here so what I think have happened here is that it was a slope but for easier access with maybe with horse or with with sled the pulling sled in the winter they made a road. This was probably a road frequently used back then. I think many of those hiking trails that we are using now in, in Norway were actually main roads of some sort. From getting to point A to point B, you had to walk past this and that. Look at the fog. You can barely see the lake down here. And the trees up there are blurry in a way.
and here the trail is very very wet so we choose to walk around it at least for a while although I'm wet and I can feel that my socks are wet at least on the top uh, I'm not cold <laughs> I'm out of breath though <laughs> anyways I'm not cold because I'm wearing wool when you're buying wool clothes for winter use 100% wool is your game if you choose one of those with 50% wool 50% nylon and stuff like that don't bother then you can just buy a cotton t-shirt instead against the cold wool is the only thing that helps in the end so rather spend your oh, well-earned money on real clothes that actually work for their intended purpose rather than spend your money on something that you might will regret that's my tip for today I guess <laughs> I have one question do you like water streams I do <laughs> As far as I can tell, the rain has basically stopped for a while. There's now only dripping from the trees and yeah, every other plant around here. Nice to get that those hoods off anyways. Getting uh, damp in between my, my ears. <laughs> Everything is muffled in there. But now Stand still. I can enjoy the sounds much more than inside this thing. I, I've grown up with fairy tales, Norwegian folklore, and all that stuff. And of course, from a very young age, we know that Nisser, Trolls, Vetter, Nöcken, all these different types of entities, creatures in the folklores were just mythologies and, and, uh, and imagination. But when you, when you look at woods like these, you can't help but think it ain't strange that the parents didn't want their kids to roam forests like these so they created these stories basically to scare the children out of the woods do not roam too far. You have Draugen, which devours people from the. He, he lives in, um, in in bodies of water, like rivers and, and so forth. And trolls living around here. Huge, small, everything. Vetter, those flying creatures. And Nöcken, which also comes from the bodies of water, which he 
he lures people with him either as a beautiful young man or a lady or even a white horse it ain't hard for me yet at least to, to understand where all those stories come from getting lost in such woods and getting harmed in such woods that ain't hard when you look at this you can imagine all the creatures that could live here in another dimension to put it like that I have mentioned boulders like these before and we now know they're from the Ice Age but in the old days they thought they were the trolls or the gods in a huge fight <laughs> which is quite amazing and because of that some of those stones had holy, holy meaning. There was, they were holy for the Vikings and, and stuff. Um, therefore, they built churches close to or on them later on. That was a train. <laughs> that was a train. Yes, we have trains in Norway. Even in rural Norway, there are some trains yet I've hit the top this is the Raven Hill my friends it's the 5th of November yeah yeah remember remember the 5th of November and all that stuff I've seen the movie I've heard the stories and uh, yeah this is the Raven Hill Do I have to light a fire? Perhaps. I got the question actually, which at the point I thought was a rather strange question, but then again, it's not. The question was, why do you bring your own firewood? Ain't there allowed to, to get twigs and, and branches off the trees in Norway? And that will depend on where you are. If you're in a nature reserve, you're not allowed but um, I'm not in nature reserve now so I could just chop down some, some twigs and, and all that stuff but trees that are alive ain't dry enough to light a fire just like that um, and now it's been raining we have rather local weather in Norway uh, which means 100 meters or, or two kilometers away from you there can be snow and you can have the Sun uh, although it would be cold of course, but the difference in weather could be significant in short distance and a short distance would be like traveling one hour you could have a totally different weather um, so I'm bringing firewood because I never know what if there is any wood available if um, if I would have to go far to, to fetch enough wood to, to even light a fire um, yeah, so I bring some wood from home just in case so that I can uh, at least enjoy a fire Yeah, there we have it. So I brought some firewood here My axe of course and uh, yeah everything I need To light the fire There lighting a fire even though it's it's wet can be really hard and I'm not saying I'm an expert or anything like that. But this went rather well, at least for now. <laughs> the thing is, a fire needs enough oxygen, but not too much. You can't strangle it, then it will die. 
and some of my wood here are a bit wet I guess so we'll see how this turns out it seems to burn rather well don't you think I've chopped down these into tiny pieces from this log so that you don't put on two big pieces at once you want the fire to, to get a whole go hold of the of the sticks you put on and you can now see that the smoke is coming up from from the log behind as it's drying out you inhale the fizzle this is great a little bit of wind I don't want more wind than this There ain't no hike without coffee. To me, it really doesn't matter if the coffee tastes bad or ain't that good. It's that brown gold. fire it's warm I, I can feel my, my ties are, are drying up and I have a nice cup of coffee oh that's warm what more can you ask for the smoke was eating me in my eyes <laughs> and it's pesto rolls So delicious. And coffee. Joy. stroll around here before I will put out the fire for now and then suddenly the fog lifted you can probably see behind me here it's so much clearer I can see the, the fog blowing away with the wind just like the smoke from the fryer But with the wind, I'm getting cold. Which means I better get going. Drink up a coffee, put out the fire, and um, 
starting the hike down. The wind has silent a bit as I now start my journey down from the Raven Hill and with the wind stopping it's starting to rain a bit again I guess I was lucky that I reached the top when I did I am a bit cold on my fingers and on my toes now because I've been wet for a while luckily this ain't such long hike that I'm afraid of getting trench foot I know for a fact that when I get home I will dive into the shower nice warm shower and then uh, put on some good dry warm clothes Found another small fire pit with uh, another beautiful view. Here you can see the farmlands just below here. You can see the river and everything. And you can see the fog or the clouds dancing by. Down in the valley. Anyways. I do not have enough warmth in my body to stay here. I have to move. <laughs> Still haven't gained that warmth. <laughs> Sometimes before I start a hike or when I'm planning the hike. Not that I plan too much, but I'm finding the route and such. I'm thinking about what to what to talk about, what to say, what's on my mind this past week and all that stuff. And most of the time when I'm getting out, it's all gone. I've forgotten all about it. Yesterday, before I went to sleep, I had these thoughts about what to engage in today and everything. And now I can't remember a single thing. The only thing I can remember is that I thought about something. <laughs> so the process starts all over while hiking.
a thing that's popped into my mind is I've talked a lot about mental health, anxiety, depression, and, and all that stuff. How we feel, and that it's okay to feel the way we feel, and all that stuff. But it's also okay to, to not feel anything. To be numb. To be overwhelmed by the tiniest things. Sometimes when I'm tired, not exhausted, like, but tired in my, in my head. Um, and the kids are playing in the living room while I cook and then I get a question from my wife I snap <laughs> two dry fingers uh, I snap and, and that's because I've ignored the symptoms I guess it's not that I become enraged but I just feel that that's enough that was it. That's that's enough. I have to go, and then I often go to <laughs> to the bathroom, sit on the floor, and just breathe, trying to calm down. Because it's no one's fault that I ended up in that state. And um, yeah, it's okay. But it's important to say that you're sorry afterwards. Even though it's extremely hard to say so, because it's, at least for me, I don't feel it's something I should say sorry for, that I'm feeling the way I do, but I'm saying sorry to them because, um, because the way I reacted towards them, maybe, quite, quite hard to explain, but I think you understand what I mean. Um, Anyways, whoa. it's okay to be overwhelmed, it's okay to be exhausted, it's okay to feel nothing, it's okay to feel everything and all at once. It's all okay. It's all okay. We're all the only humans, after all, right? Whoa. <laughs> I've gained some pulse by now and now I'm quite warm. It's not cold anymore. I can feel that my toes are wet but I'm not cold anymore. Which is the most important thing. Water creates life and water takes life. That's the way it has always been and will always be. Water, the water destroys and the water creates. Hmm, I'm wondering what season it is. And suddenly, when I came out from this foresty place, the valley was open, kind of. And I have great views. Or not great views, but I, I have great visibility. I can see far. As if I'm way below the fog. And that might be. I might be well below below the fog now. <laughs> and I'm getting more soaked. Whoa, this one is really, really slippery. I don't know if I dare doing that. I think... I think I'm heading down there. Or maybe up there. I don't know. Anyways, I need to get over this stream. 
that previously probably just were a tiny tiny stream let's see if I jump here I will probably land there and that's 90% certain it's it's um, it's soft ground and I could fall and I do not want that so there This is, without a doubt, the wettest part of this trail. It's, no matter where I put my feet, I sink a couple of centimeters down. And uh, soak my feet. As I've said before, it's now more water than feet in my shoes. <laughs> you might ask yourself, why I am putting myself into these situations where I hike and get wet and probably uncomfortable and cold and all that stuff. Well, it's a part of what I enjoy the most. Being out in, in the nature. And I've come to the point where I I find enjoyment in this too. Right now I'm starting to become a bit cold again and I'm wet and that's not very comfortable but I had a blast up top. I've seen amazing waterfalls, I've heard birds I've, I've been outside, breathing the fresh air and the smoke air from the campfire. <coughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's my hunt for endorphins. And we all need those endorphins, don't we? Anyways, I hope you enjoy this one. At least I try to make it enjoyable for, for everyone. And... Um, I really hope to see you next time and in the meantime if you like this thumbs up button and um, if you want to see more stuff like this or maybe in better weather please subscribe and hit that notification bell as well and um, I guess I see you guys uh, next week or, or something like that <laughs> see you around <laughs>